All right. Thank you guys for hopping on tonight. Tonight is October 3rd, the first team call of the month. <clears throat> I'm very excited. Oh, actually, I'm going to mute everybody real quick. Thanks for, uh, thanks for bearing with me here. <clears throat> um, so I'm very excited for tonight's team call because Miss Cindy Adkinson is going to be hosting um, a team call. But before I turn it over to her, um, we re I really want to, um, like Cindy and I have been talking about this, and for those of you who've been on live or watched the recording of the team calls in the last month and a half or two months, um, you know that there's been like a transition with our team calls. You know, like y'all know I'm a big self-love pusher. I'm a self-love motivator, and I've preached about you know, loving yourself internally and doing all these things and, you know, motivating you and empowering you and all this stuff. And, you know, there was that team call where I was humble and I said, you know, well, what I haven't been doing is training you in the areas that we need to be trained on to be successful coaches. Right. And I didn't do it until Cindy called me out. So yeah, everyone thanks Cindy on this. Um, <clears throat> but so that's why our team calls have been focusing more on training and the action steps and what you need to do to be successful because in this business, yes, we want to love ourselves. Yes. Yes. We want to embrace our imperfections. Yes. We want to truly feel empowered and confident and comfortable and all that. But the other hand, we also want to move forward in our business. We don't want to be stagnant. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to be paying, um, more with Beachbody than we're getting in. We don't want to just be stagnant in our, in our business, whether it's rank or not helping people or whatever. So I really want you guys taking consideration that when you guys learn, when you guys hear about these tips or ideas, or you get an aha moment, like don't just let it sit on your notebook. Don't just let it sit in your notepad or your phone or wherever you keep your notes, like actually do something with it because nothing's going to change. If you just take notes, nothing's going to change unless you start implementing it. And we have to realize we are all CEOs of our business, right? We are all business owners, right? So you guys have to act like it. We are all in charge of our own business, no matter what training Cindy does or I do or the national wake up call or on the misfit Republic team call, no matter what any of that says or does or teaches you, it doesn't matter unless you actually put in action. Action is what matters. So if you want to build a business, you have to be consistent. If you want to be successful, you need to put in the action steps every day. If you guys don't know something like you don't know how to do a power hour or you don't know how to invite or you don't know how to do this or you don't know what personality personal development book that you should be reading based on what you want or what you need help with that is what we're all here for here for we're all family you don't just have to go to your upline post in the big team page tag cindy tag me tag jackie walker dana chesting you could tag any of us and we'll help you know there's tons of people in here that are willing to help and we're not going to let you guys like be like well you snooze, you lose, or, you know, whatever dicks say. Um, <laughs> but you guys know what I mean. So I just want you guys to know, if you want change, you have to make that change. And in order to make that change, you have to put in actions. So with that said, I'm super excited about tonight's team call. And Cindy, our girl who actually wrote down notes, so I'm actually going to time her and see how long she takes with notes. Uh oh, I see multiple pages. We're in trouble. <laughs> but with that said, I'm really excited to welcome Cindy Adkinson. Hey, I'm gonna, oh, you unmute me. Okay. I got you. Hi. Hello. So um, for those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Cindy Adkinson. I'm a daily coach here on Mr. or you know, on Supple Misfits, Mr. Republic. Um, let's see. So first of all, I just really wanted to kind of um, preempt like this call because I had been thinking about this team call. Um, for a while, like I've been like, it's been kind of like brewing with this idea and concept because it's kind of the way I've been changing my own business and my mindset towards my business. And, and then Vicky asked me to host the call tonight and I was like, oh my God, I'll, can I do it on this? Because I've been thinking about it. So, um, I just wanted to kind of tell, oh, she's, look, I don't look at Daniela. She's like, oh, I see Vicky take a picture. It's like, she's posing. She's got it. Um, Vicky's all over your Instagram story in here. Um, so basically I, first of all, I wanted to give you guys a couple of resources when I first start because, um, they were kind of what has really sparked my, 
kind of my new passion about this approach to my business. And, and first of all, like, I'm not necessarily going to be giving you guys any actionable steps here tonight, but what I want to be, I want you guys to walk away with is a little bit of a different mindset and an approach in how you work your business and how you see people like the opportunity that you have with other people. Okay. And so that's kind of like the goal, the end goal of this call. And, and then you take that mindset forward in your recruiting, in your relationship building, you know, in everything you do. And you'll kind of understand a little bit more about that as I get going. Right. But first of all, so I'm sure that if you're, you know, not living under a rock, which I know all of you aren't because you're here at night, right. Or you're watching the recording, you hear the word side hustle, right? Side hustle, passion project. Like it's everywhere. Like basically everyone these days has a freaking side hustle, right? And for a lot of you guys, Beachbody already is a side hustle for you. Like for me, technically it is a side hustle for me in my own business as well. Right. So, um, so there's a really great resource that I just wanted to, and especially because Vicki does talk a lot about self-love and women in business and women empowerment. So, um, I'm a huge Dave Ramsey fan. Like my husband and I, we've paid off a lot of debt, like $60,000, $70,000 in debt with him um, using his program, but I listen to his podcast all the time. And then of course I hear other podcasts because he has guest speakers. Well, he has a, he has a, um, a speaker on his panel, whatever, with the Ramsey solutions. Her name is Christy Wright and you can find her website. It's Christy Wright.com. It's actually C H R I S T Y W R I G H T. So if someone could type that down in the thing, that would be awesome. Oh, Dave Ramsey is the person that I follow with, with all that stuff. So he's like the debt guru, right? He gets everyone out of debt. This the total money makeover is the program that I've done with him. Um, so basically she has a book out called business boutique and she talks, she does a lot of live talks on her website. She has a lot of free resources for women. Like that's her focus is, um, women who are running and opening small businesses, whether it's something they're selling like an Etsy store, network marketing, like, and she does a lot of live events. So she may be coming to your town. She has an entire business boutique academy and everything. And it's just like, she teaches you everything from like branding to all kinds of things. And, but her focus is on how every woman needs a side hustle. Right. And I just love her stuff. And so I just like eat it up. I'm like, oh my God, like content, content. Right. And so I highly recommend that you guys go out and kind of check her out. If, if you want more information, like after the call. Okay. And then another guy who has a really good book out too, it's called, it's actually called side hustle. His name is Chris Gillibo. I don't, I totally just watched his name, but just look up side hustle book and you'll find it. It's Chris Gillibo. If you, if it sounds anything like how I do, I don't know if, if I'm saying it right or what, but I actually just, so I had seen his book and, um, and heard about him cause he has another book that I've read but I just heard it like an hour long interview on the Zig Ziglar show with him. And it was like, just amazing how he talked about, um, a little bit of what I'm going to talk about here about how, you know, not everyone, like I'm an entrepreneur. Like my, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. Like my mom was an entrepreneur. My dad was an entrepreneur. I've owned my own accounting business for a very long time. So like for me delving into Beachbody wasn't a really big transition for me because I've already had like me starting my own business wasn't scary, right? That was the way, right? I have been raised to think that there is no other way except the entrepreneurship way, right? We don't, we don't want to work for someone else. And so that's just how I was always raised. And, but not everyone is like that. In fact, the majority of people are not like that. So when we go, you know, I think that a lot of like, there's a lot of disconnect because we sometimes when we are approaching prospects or people that we want to join our team, people that we, we desperately want to be joining us. We think, you know, well, they already have a job or we, we approach it with the mindset of, I want them to be a full-time coach, right? Because, and I even hear it a lot, like in our leaders groups, like we'll hear people say all the time, like, you know, how do I find rock star coaches? Or, um, I need to find more rock star coaches. Like you'll hear leaders say that. Um, and, and, you know, of course the answer is like, well, you be a rock star coach yourself. Right. And you'll like, will attract light. But the fact of the matter is like, 
you know, I went to Plat I go to Platinum Edge. So if you guys aren't aren't aware of what Platinum Edge is, it's like a, a convention, it's like a whatever three day convention that's put on by the head of our team, Christine Dwyer. The next one's in October. In like a week. I can't go because it's on my son's birthday. So I'm missing it for the first time in three years, right? But um, but basically she's the head of our team platinum presenter. So if you don't know who Christine Dwyer is, I highly recommend you follow her because she's amazing and she's like literally my soulmate, my best friend, and she doesn't know it. She kind of knows it because I've told her that in person, but like I don't know if she remembers it. Um <laughs> she's she's literally my favorite person in the whole world, like as far as beach body is concerned, and she is my ultimate inspiration when you look at her body. I'm like, I want to look like that. Um, but anyway, like, and I'm going to tell you something that she said at Platinum Edge, but I don't want it to like be a downer for you. I'm going to tell it to you because I want it to inspire you to take action in a different way. Okay. So basically one year at Platinum Edge, she was talking about that because that question had come up, like, how do you find rockstar coaches or, um, you know, like none of my coaches are working or, you know, hardly any of my coaches are working. And she like laid down some facts that are true facts. She has the largest network in Beachbody. And so it's actual data that she's gotten from her own downline. And basically, you know, one out of every 10 coach that you, that you recruit into this business is going to work the business. Um, some of those are going to go full time. And, you know, a fraction of those are going to go full time and a fraction of those are going to go all the way to the top and become the superstar diamonds and the, and the 15 star diamonds and all that. Right. Okay. One in time. So if you're going, you know, sitting around going, where are my rockstar coaches? And you're not recruiting, you know, 20 and 30 coaches and, or, you know, or more a year. Well, there's your answer. Right. But she said two to three will be discount coaches and they're going to constantly go in and out of active status. And one thing I see with a lot of leaders, especially new leaders, is that they spend a lot of time on those coaches, trying to get them to go active again, you know, begging them to come back, figuring out why they're going inactive and like racking their brains around it. Right. And they're just always going to go inactive. And so, um, and then four to six coaches are going to be hobby coaches. They're going to be people that want this business or like they're really good customers and they're like super passionate about the products. Like they've gotten extremely good results with Beachbody, you know, and these people are going to be like, they, they are so obsessed with the products, with, with the programs, with Shakeology, with the performance line, that they are never going to go inactive. They're going to stay active the whole time that they they're, they're here. I've never been inactive in over five years. I've never once gone inactive because I love each body. And I've, I've literally had Shakeology delivered to my house every month for well over five years, right? Because I had it before I became a coach, right? So because I believe in the products, like I believe, you know, my husband and I've lost 160 pounds together with each body. Like I know they work. Like I know the only thing standing in the way of me getting the rest of the way is me, not the product. Right. So, um, you know, with these people, you know, these people are going to be like a lot of you guys, you're going to host challenge groups. You're going to hit success clubs. Sometimes you're going to show up on team calls and sometimes you're going to take action with those team calls. And sometimes you're not, and that's totally okay. You know, in, but these are the majority of the coaches in our network, not just on our team on unstoppable misfits on, on my team to fit to quit nation, but on Mr. Republic on platinum presenters it within the entire coach network. Right. And so I was like, well, if that's like the majority of the people, if these are the people that are showing up, staying, showing up for team calls, showing up for challenge groups every month, day, you know, month in and month out, never giving up. Like, why aren't we focusing on those people and those types of people to bring into the business instead of focusing on that one magical rock star unicorn that we know is out there that's going to just come into this business and shoot my freaking team cycle bonuses through the roof and I'm going to retire a millionaire in a month, right? Which, like I said, is a magical unicorn. And while I do believe in unicorns. That's going to happen, right? It's, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Which one of you is it? My fingers are crossed. It's me. It's me. <laughs> I'm just a late bloomer. You know? So like, 
you know, we kind of, we always, re, we kind of aim our, our posts too. Like we aim our social media and our recruiting posts. A lot of, you know, I look at a lot of your guys' uh, social media stuff and um, I don't always comment on it or like it because, you know, if, especially if it's a recruiting post, because then it shows up on my newsfeed, right? And I want my followers to follow me on you. No offense, but well, it is, right? You know, and so, but like, I see what people are doing and a lot of people are really kind of aiming their recruiting towards that. Like we, we aim our like challenge group posts and our recruiting posts towards the end ideal, right? Like appealing towards, do you want to quit your full-time job? Like, I think you should quit your full-time job. Like, do you get anxiety about going to your full-time career? Like, well, I've got this opportunity where you could just work from home and you never have to go back to your nine to five job again. Does that make sense? Like, like a lot of our, our um, posting and the way that we approach people is kind of aimed towards that when that's not necessarily what people need or what they're looking for. Right. And the people that are looking for that are one in 10, right? They're going to be one out of 10 people. So it's like, while we can totally aim things towards the one in 10, why not also include the other four to six, right? The people that are going to show up, the people, you know, I, I know that not everyone here gets team cycle bonuses, but you know, when you get, you know, Emerald or above, you get what, I'm sorry, you guys, I had bell peppers tonight with my fajitas and they make me burp worse than my LaCroix. And so I'm really sorry if I'm a little gassy and I'm a little burpy, at least it's coming out that end. So the other, um, you know, but they, you know, so really focusing on the, the people that need us, right? Because I'm going to give you kind of guys like six different scenarios right here that I really want you to think about because a lot of people, like I know when we, um, like a couple weeks ago or maybe a month ago, Vicky was talking about like, asked everyone what they need or what they want. And I swear to you, every single person on there wanted money, freedom and time freedom. Right. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you're looking for a hundred thousand dollars a year or $500,000 a year. Right. Um, I think that a lot of times we see coaches who are making a full time income or we see coaches that post like income progressions and things like that, where you see they're making 10 and $20,000 a week. And we think that that is when we have made it. That is when we are successful is when we are at that level. And I really feel like it disturbs us and it, and it, and it's, it does a disservice to us and it, and it does a disservice to a lot of the people that really, really, really could desperately use our help and this opportunity. Right? So basically I got notes. I didn't even go on my notes. You guys look, I got one page down. Um, so, so basically like for, for me, like, I'm focusing 100% of my like recruiting and when I'm talking to people on bringing pe finding a need, right? So fulfilling a need, that's where we're going to, it's not Beachbody, it's not the opportunity because people can buy Beachbody anywhere, right? They can buy our programs anywhere. They want you and they want something you're offering that is not just programs, right? So, um, so I kind of wanted to go over like six reasons why I, why people need a side hustle. And I'm going to give you some examples that you can kind of use and think about when you guys are talking to people and in conversations, right? Because these are going to be like, for me, I always think of it as like mental cues. The more conversations you have with people, the more cues you'll get mentally to invite, right? And a lot of people think that they only should be inviting to the business opportunity when someone has a financial um, struggle. Or like when someone needs a new job or needs the financial opportunity. And I'm going to give you some other ideas for ways that you guys can be talking to people and recruiting people and inviting people that aren't financial. And then we will go over the financial in the end because of course, obviously there are finances at the end, right? Okay. So why everyone needs a side hustle? One, it opens you to new experiences, right? Now my coach Mallory is not on here, but she'll probably, she always watches the recording, but so she's a stay at home mom, but she does work outside the home like two days a week. Right. But one of her new focuses is on a lot of stay at home moms, right? Because a lot of stay at home moms, like while they love being moms and they love staying home and that's such an amazing opportunity and blessing to be able to do that. It can get crazy. It can be 
crazy town, only talking to your children all day long, right? And so like people who are stay-at-home moms, they may not be looking for a full-time job. They may not be looking for a full-time girl boss, you know, six-figure career, but they could be looking for a little bit of extra money and some community and connection, right? And that's a value that you could be really kind of like connecting them with and that community and being able to talk to other people and just have fun is a really great opportunity for that, right? So there's people like that. People who are introverts, right? I have a lot of coaches on my own team, which I don't even know how this even happens, but because I'm, well, I guess I am an extroverted introvert, but I still don't. I mean, I talk to strangers all the time, but they're like straight up introverts, right? Like with massive anxiety and don't talk to people, but they need connection, right? Because we're humans and we need connection, whether it's online through social media and like the social media part kind of gives them a little bit of a um, protective veil and they can kind of grow from that from that protective veil, right? And I know that Vicki, you have some introverts on your team too, which is really weird. I don't know. They're like, oh, you're a safe, you're a safe, crazy person, right? Wait, 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 wait. Did you just see Danny point at herself? Girl, oh. you are not okay. You may be an extrovert, introvert, but you're not an introvert, introvert. Like I see you. I see you. Yeah. I see you. you know, so like people who are introverted or people like who don't have a lot of friends and not a lot of community, like I know that was a really big thing for me. Personally, like at the time, as I just took a drink of my wine, um, at the time, my husband and I were um, sober. My husband had um, gone through drug and alcohol treatment for prescription painkillers, right? And so he was sober, and I I stopped drinking to support him on his you know sober journey, right? And so it was like that for nine years of our life and our relationship. But when we first got sober, like we lost all of our friends. Like it was like, you could literally hear like a giant, like swoosh, like where they like, were like, peace. And we're like, oh, awesome. Like, no, I mean, we didn't allow alcohol or anything in our house and no one would show up. We, we'd have uh, football parties. No one would show up for those. Like, it was like, it was hard. It was so, so, so hard for us. And so, um, Finding friends and community, even if they don't live right next to you, has really been a godsend to me. It was so important to me in my own, you know, journey with my weight loss and my own journey as a coach, my personal development journey. Like, and there are so many people out there that feel that way. And you know, I'm gonna be honest, like when you are an adult and you start like having kids, it's like really hard to make adult friends, like like new adult friends, right? Like you either have your friends that you've had for like 40 years, am I dating myself? 40 years, whatever, you know, and you're like, but it's, but it's really hard to make new friends. And so I feel like are really, you know, if you see someone that's like that, you see the need that someone has in that area. Like when you're talking to someone about the coaching opportunity, you talk to them about the community, right? You talk to them about the amazing friends you've gained, you know, the amazing like camaraderie, this group of people who are not going to let you fail, who are going to always support you. Right. And so or like, you know, the stay at home mom thing, like have a little outlet where you can have something for yourself or even have some cash for yourself. If like you feel, cause a lot of stay at home moms, I know feel like they are kind of trapped, especially if they don't earn their own income, even though, if, even if they have like a joint income at their home, they still feel like they have a hard time spending money on themselves or, you know, doing things for themselves because they aren't the breadwinner or whatever, you know? Can I, can I add on to this, Cindy? No. <laughs> I love I, how I'm going to do it. I'm adding in in my notes. Yeah. <laughs> sure. um, I love how you talked about this because I think so many of us are looking for like that golden egg, you know, when we're looking, we're like scrolling social media and we're like, okay, so who, who could become a coach? Who can become a coach? And we're looking for people like, like Cindy said, people that are hurting for income or wanting a new job or they're unhappy at their job, or usually it's focused around income. But the thing of it is, you guys, I asked you guys what you guys love most about this business, right? A couple months or a couple weeks ago. I asked you what you loved, what you've gotten most out of this business. You guys had all these amazing, crazy answers. I guarantee you, you're not looking for those people on your social media that are preaching that that's what they need because you're looking for the ones that are hard up or that need income or that uh, want career growth or something. 
we're, we're so focused. I mean, yes, income is a big part of our growing our business and stuff, but we're so focused on that, that we're forgetting about all the other amazing awesomeness that Beachbody coaching has to offer. And all those amazing people that need that support, that need that human connection, that need that community and the accountability on their own journeys, you know? So I love how you touched on that. So quit looking for that golden egg. And to even add on that too, is like, you almost do yourself a disservice while we have an amazing when they're in financial need, learning this business and being in sales, which we are in sales. I mean, that is what we do. It doesn't feel like it because we're in service sales. We're in like human to human sales, right? Um, where we're really helping people. So it's, it's not like necessarily like a product where a lot of what we do is helping people develop, right? Um, it's just, it's not just a commodity, but even so when you're desperate, desperate salespeople stink. People don't, when you're desperate for money or like, I know for me, like when I was really, 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 really focused on like success club all the time. Like that was my end goal to end. No, I wanted to be a success club all-star. Like I was only focusing on people that would get me a challenge pack or get me success club points. And at the end of the month, if I wasn't at my goal, I was like thrown out the desperate shit, you know, where I'm like, I'll give you a discount, like, oh, or I'm trying to hit my goal, you know? And you send these things and people are like, mm, block, right? And that's like what happens to you, right? And instead of focusing on where people are and what they need, like, you know, some months, like, especially with like the all access pass, like people wouldn't want Shakeology. So like one month I sold like 14 all access passes instead, because I was focusing on what people really wanted. And now like Carl Deichler said, all those all access passes are now going to like renew, 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 renew here soon, starting in December. Right. So, you know, but like, but you got to focus on where people are, right. And not necessarily, and, and even people who are the people that you think that would be amazing on your team because they're looking for a change. They may be so desperate that it actually backfires on you and on them. Right. And then they're just going to even be more angry and bitter about this opportunity too. Right. And so that's why like to this whole side hustle mentality is more relaxed and a more relaxed approach to running your business and really um, focusing on where, where you are and small steps, which I'm going to talk about too. Okay. Okay. So I'm only on step two. Server flow. Um, I know. Look at that little baby. Look at the little eyes right now. Oh, little baby. So cute. Um, oh my God. See, we were just talking about this. No more babies. No more babies. We already said this earlier. Um, so number two, so you can figure out what you want to be when you want, when you grow up. Right. So like I'm 41, I've been an accountant for 20 years this January and, um, I freaking hate it. And I didn't know that I hated it until I started Beachbody. I basically fell into it and it wasn't, I never was like, Oh, I'm so passionate about accounting and numbers. Like blah, blah, blah. Right now, my mom is an accountant. She's owned her own accounting business. And I got mad in a nine to five job at someone who I, I got passed over for, for promotion and had to um, train the person, the man that was my new position. And I got so mad that I walked out and called my mom crying at like 21 years old and was like, I just want to know my job. I need a job. Can I work for you, please, please, until I find a new job? She's like, yeah, you can come work for me. And I never left. And then I branched out on my own, right? And I went back to school and got my accounting degree. And it just came easy to me. So, but like I, it was through the personal development and like the different tests that we do through Beachbody, like on finding like what your passions are and what brings you joy and your vision board. I was like, I realized that that's not what I wanted to do. And while it was really good money, it's like accounting is really good money, especially if you're self-employed. And, and I, I used to do a lot of taxes and, and, uh, but it brought me zero joy. Right. And, but coaching is my true passion. And I love, love, like one of my favorite things in the whole world is to mentor other coaches and see my coaches or any coaches on our team, like have like mental breakthroughs or income breakthroughs and stuff like that. And finally, you know, helping them overcome roadblocks and things like that. And I never would have known that if I hadn't joined this coaching opportunity. I never would have known that I was even remotely good at it at all, even though I do fail miserably at it like every day. But, but I do feel like I have, um, I feel like it's, 
it's my jam. Like I do feel like even though I fail forward every single day at it, like this, I truly believe is my calling. Right. And so, you know, for other people, they wouldn't necessarily know that. Right. Cause they may be in a job or maybe in a career like, like I have where it's just not the right thing for them or they have never figured out what is right for them. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to cough. Sorry again. You know, another thing too, is that, you know, I mean, I feel like we get stuck so much and we don't learn how to dream anymore. Like so many of us just get caught in like the groundhog day of life. And that's something too, that, that this opportunity has given me is the ability to like want for more, like, and I don't mean more as in like more things or more, um, like I think that can, I'm like really big on contentment and things like that. Like, so it's really kind of funny for me to hear, hear about that, but like, or to talk about that, but like more out of like the meat of life. Right. And whatever that is for you is going to be different. It's different for every single person. And, but really like saying, okay, I'm going to freaking go for this. I'm not just going to get up every day and live this life and just go to bed and come home from work and have it be a groundhog say, I'm going to, we get one life, right? I believe that and we get one life and I'm going to freaking live it and I'm going to live it well. And I'm going to live it doing what I want to do and helping the people I want to help and being in an environment that's positive and amazing for me and my family, right? Yeah, YOLO, but like in a good way, right? Like I said in that post, that way. Not like YOLO, you go do crazy stuff, but YOLO, like you only live once, so live it well, right? Um, you know, so I think that that is something that you can look for too in people, like people that are, aren't necessarily looking for that full-time career, but are looking for something more. There's just something missing in their life, right? And they don't even know what it is at this point. Okay, so... It teaches you time management. That's number three. So I have horrible time management skills. I have my entire life. I have adult ADD and I have learned so many skills through Beachbody that have helped me not just in my, um, in my Beachbody business, but in my accounting career, in my family life that I use and have implemented into my family, you know, with my own child who has ADHD and stuff like that. But like, you know, you talk about like time management, like focus work, like learning how to focus work time or doing deep work, right? Like really actually like honing in on your passion projects and the things that are, you're really passionate about, you know, time blocking, you know, learning how to be more present in, in your life, in your family's life, you know, like learning how to set up boundaries, which I feel like no one in this world has enough boundaries. And, and, you know, those, that, those time management skills will really compound over time. Like, I don't think that people give enough value to the power hour. It is called a power hour for a reason. And I feel like Joelle, who's the founder of Mr. Republic, if you don't know who that is, she is a prime example of using time management and a power hour to build an empire, right? Because when she started this business, she was working full time. And she was in, in college full time and, um, she was so stressed out. She was broke as a joke and she would focus one hour a day on her business. No more. That's it. And she did that for a very long time, you know, and now she's making six or seven years later, you know, multi six figure income, you know, right? Like high multi figure, six figure income. Not just like a little bit over a hundred thousand, but you know, we're talking multi six figure income, right? And now if you follow her, you see her, she's now has a baby and she's able to truly live the life that she wants because she put in a little bit every day. She learned how to time, you know, use that time, those time management skills and really just, it did, it didn't have to be five hours a day. And that's the beauty of a side hustle, right? It's like a lot of people go, like, I know a lot of my coaches get the rejection um, I don't have time to do that. Now, I don't know what you guys all say back to people when they say, I don't have time to do that. But my response is always, how much time do you think this takes? That's always the first thing I say back to people. I, I, that's actually my, my response to any objection, right? When someone says to me, is this a pyramid scheme? I say, what do you mean by that? Right? Always. Because a lot of people really, they say stuff like that. They say shit like, Oh, I don't have enough time or, you know, but then they watch binge watch, like Vicky says they're whatever they're, this is us or they're supernatural. That's my binge watching thing that I'm doing right now. It's binge watching supernatural episodes. 
um, you know, or whatever it is, the bachelor or, you know, whatever it is, right. Or they, you know, or they don't have enough money, but they buy, you see on their social media, they're out at the bar getting drinks or they're like buying their Starbucks. That's like $7 every single day. Right. So, um, you know, so there's always those opportunities to kind of like, okay, especially with the time thing, like a lot of you, yeah, pranks, you have this giant steal all the time. I'm like, really people, you have enough money. I know how expensive those things are. Um, you know, but like, so always keep in mind that it doesn't have to always be, it, you know, I feel like some people see full-time coaches and they hear, okay, they're doing all this stuff. They're on social media all the time. They're doing all these challenge groups or hosting team calls or, you know, they're posting about working all the time and you may be working full time or your avatars or the people that you're talking to may be full time, you know, working full time or have a crazy schedule. Like for me, I have a freaking crazy schedule. I have three kids. My husband works like 60 to 70 hours a week. I have, I own another entire, you know, accounting business that, that I run by myself and I'm the one that does every single household task here. So I do all the grocery shopping, meal planning. I cook all the meals. I get all my kids off to school. I do homework time and I work my beach body business. Right. So it's like, you just got to focus on the time management and help other people do the same. Right. Cause a lot of people, they just don't know how much time they really have. Okay. Okay. Number four, look, we're on the home stretch. I promise it's going to get faster. Vicky's like, what time is it? Oh, I got time. Um, so this one I love because some of my coaches have really experienced this firsthand and and, it, and people don't think of this as the value in the marketplace, right? But, you know, having your side hustle, having people into this opportunity, it helps you increase skills in all areas of your life, right? So not just, you know, like, in, let's say you have another job or I have another career, right? Like my accounting career or another job as a teacher or, you know, another business owner or whatever. You run a dental office like Teresa, you know. I mean, it, the skills that you can have in this business will help you in all other areas of your life, you know, like, you know, through personal development, you know, business development, like, like my husband right now, I got a whisper right now because he can probably hear me. So he got promoted, whatever. And now he's like reading, he's like leading a team of people and they're like crushing it all of a sudden. But Nick is using the, he's reading the book on, um. Oh my God, he's going to kill me. Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll's book, the Seahawks coach. He wrote a book on leadership. I'm totally whispering because I feel like they're right out there. So anyway, he's been listening to it on Audible and he's been applying the leadership skills at work, right? So like, are you kidding me? My husband never in a million fucking years would have ever read personal development if it wasn't for Peach Body. <laughs> like, so I'll tell you. Pete Carroll wrote a personal development book? Oh yeah, on leadership, yeah. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, and so he's like, He's using that in his job. Right. And, and, um, and so, you know, so like person, you know, so you use that and it's like, tri- you know, that's like a huge thing, right. That trickled into my life, my family, like my husband reading personal development because I read personal development because of Beachbody told me to, you know, right. So even if Beachbody went away, like I would be still reading personal development. Right. Um, so business develop and leadership, right? Like we have all this leadership training that not just like is for beach body, but at least for life, right? Leadership of yourself, leadership of your coaches and you all know, are chatting in there. I don't even know what you guys are saying in there. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, like social media and branding, um, sales, like learning the sales process or learning to ask for something. Like I know my coach, Jesse Jeff, who's not on here right now because she hasn't been feeling well. Like she actually works at Kohl's and, um, they have like this, you know, all they got to do is ask the people if they want to sign up for a credit card. Right. And they are supposed to do it like every single time. And she had a bunch, she had like way more than anyone, way more signups than anyone else. And they were trying to figure out why she had more signups. And she's like, well, because I was just asking, I don't take it personal. And she was talking about how like she learned that from inviting to beach body. Right because she's like literally got so much anxiety that she has a hard time speaking to people. Right. And so for her to be like, Oh, you want to sign up for this credit card? And and now she just got promoted at her job there. Right. Awesome. So like, yeah. So, I mean, you know, you have all these different kinds of things and networking communication, you know, another thing is career insurance. So a lot of you guys like have spouses or you have a job where, you know, nothing is guaranteed, right? Like, 
you may have a full-time job or your spouse may have a full-time job and you think that it's somehow guaranteed or, or more secure than being an entrepreneur, but nothing in life is guaranteed. And so having multiple streams of income in your life is such a benefit. And it's such a, like a, such a benefit that you can talk to other people about, you know, like I'm going to drop you like a little fact bomb. Like the average millionaire has five to seven multiple streams of income, right? Whether it's like a, a salary job, entrepreneur job, residual income from like royalties or another business, right? Like we, like in Beachbody alone, we get two different types of income, right? We get our commission and we get residual income through team cycle bonuses. And so, um, you know, and then you have, you know, interest income, there's all these different types of income. And, and so having that opportunity or having that available, it, it can be life changing. And I'm going to share with you guys my own personal experience with this and kind of how my mindset changed about this because uh, not a lot of you guys know this, but like, so basically in my accounting business, I was earning over six figures, like well over six figures in my accounting business. And um, my husband, we had retired him from, uh, you know, and, and my beach body business was doing well and we had retired, but it was nowhere near what my, what my accounting business was. And that was the whole like idea, right? Was to decline my accounting business and ramp up my, my, uh, each party business until boom, I could get rid of accounting. Well, <clears throat> last year, right around this time, last September, um, I had let go of some of my accounting clients and I had, I was on retainer with a very, very large client of mine. And they decided that they were going to basically eliminate about 60% of my income and my hours. Like, and I was given like seven days notice. Right. And we had retired my husband from chemical dependency counseling so like we literally had seven days notice that we were going from six figures to about like we couldn't even afford our rent at our house right here. Like that's how little income we were going to be having. And so, um, yeah, it was like, it was like panic mode and I was like freaked out. Right. And, um, but the thing is, is that I had beach body income still coming in every single week. And if, before that moment, before that moment when I had lost all that income, I would downplay my beach body income. I would be like, oh, that's, I mean, it came every week, whether I made a freaking sale or not, because I've built up a team, right? And so I have residual income because I do get team cycle bonuses every single week, you know, because I've helped people for years. And I was like, I would always downplay that income, thinking that it wasn't enough, thinking that because it wasn't six figures, it was garbage money. I don't even know. <laughs> like, I, I don't really think it was garbage money, but like, I, I just would always kind of downplay that. But I will tell you my freaking side hustle money, my beach body income saved us. It is what was the determining factor between us losing our home and not right. Well, my husband could go try to find a job, like knowing that income was coming in that second income was life changing for me. And so like, I will never look at it again. Like, and I think that's the problem is a lot of people, especially when you're in that transition, which a lot of us are right. We're in that transition where we're not making what we want to be making. Like we don't necessarily feel like we've made it yet, but like, or like it's enough yet. And so we kind of belittle the income that we do receive. And like, you know, I know that some of you guys are going through the get rich lucky bitch thing. Um, with Andrea, like she's got a new book club with that book. If you haven't read that book, I highly recommend it. Get rich. Lucky bitch. That's really the name of it. Get rich. Lucky bitch. But she talks a lot about being grateful, like how, how we can manifest money into our lives by being grateful for every penny that we receive. And, um, I feel like that's, I was like a really shitty steward at that. Like I was really bad at that. And like, and because I was, I was just downplaying the income that I had received from Beachbody. And so I know for a fact that so that's kind of rolling into number six is that, you know, show me the money, right? Like, like so many of us focus on full-time income and how full-time income is what's going to, um, sustain us and what people need. Like, like I said in the beginning, we're looking for people, we're looking for that one in 10 instead of the four to six people who like $500 a month can be life-changing for them. You know, $500 a month is a car payment. Shit, $500 a month is my entire grocery budget for my five people in my family. That's my grocery budget is $500 a month for my family, right? 
You know, $500 a month is an extra vacation. It's funding a college fund for your kids, right? And so like finding people and really reaching out to people, like when, when you look at all these examples of all these things I gave you that people could be looking for, now it takes you from seeing, like Vicky said, looking for that one golden egg to now every single person that you come in contact with, unless they're a total freaking asshole who we don't want on our team because they're just a jerk, should be invited, right? But the key is, is that, you know, you have to figure out what their need is. You have to figure out where they fit on these six items, right? Your job as a coach is, is, to, find, is to connect with people every single day and find out what they need and fulfill that need for them, right? Inviting someone is doing your job and it's doing your job well. Whether they say yes or whether they say no, that's their business, right? We, of course we want it, but the thing is is that we spend so much of our time inviting the same people. We spend so much of our same time trying to convince people who aren't ready yet, you know? We spend so much of our time scrolling social media, looking for that golden egg person or trying to tweak these perfect posts that are going to attract our very special avatar, which I do believe avatar is good because people will follow you that like you, right? You know, I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea. That's okay, right? I get it, you know? You know, so if you do that though, if you go out and you connect with people and you ask the right questions and you ask them about themselves instead of about yourself, you'll find these things that I just gave you. You will find something on that list of those things that I gave you and you will be able to present to them, not necessarily the full-time coaching opportunity, right? But you'll be able to present to them an opportunity that they can do on the side that's not going to interfere with their other life, their other job, but it's going to increase all of these different amazing things in their life, right? It's going to benefit them in X, Y, Z way because you've done your job and you've, and you've done the work to find out what it is they need, right? And so there you go. You know, you do that over and over and over again, you know, your business is going to grow. I guarantee it. And you know what the hardest part of all that is? Do you guys realize what the hardest part of all that is? It's the ask. That's it. That's it. And if you think about it, that's really not hard. Asking is really not hard. I don't care if you're an introvert. I don't care if you're shy. I don't care if you're the world's biggest peacock and you're extrovert as they come. It is not hard. It is not difficult. It is not scary to ask. Because what you're doing is you're presenting an opportunity to someone that could potentially change their lives in so many ways, shape, and form. Yeah, Why would what? Corinne's not on here, is she? Corinne, no. Corinne, no. She she told me um, I don't know, probably a year and a half ago or something like that. Which this has always stuck with me with when asking now. Like I always think of this now. Is she told me that we were just kind of chatting back and forth about like what we love about the business, right? And like what what our favorite thing is about the business. And, she, and we were talking about inviting, how, how we wish everyone could see how amazing it is, right? You know, we wish like all the people on social media that like, you know, that don't know what we know, like could see what it is. And she said that that's one thing that she does when she invites people is that she knows that when she's asking people to the opportunity, that she's presenting them with a gift, mm -hmm. yep. the gift that she's been given. And when you, and so I started thinking about that when I would invite people to, and I think a lot of us, like the people that are afraid to ask for it are thinking of themselves. They're thinking of, am I being judged? Or what are they going to think of me? Or they're not going to like me or they're, they're going to judge me in some way, which is obviously why we do personal development. And the more personal development you do, the less fucks you'll give. Like, I'm going to be honest. Like that's just basically how it works. Like it's, it's true. Right. Sorry about the potty mouth, but that's like how I feel about it. And, and so, you know, that's why we have you do personal development is so you're like, you're like bulletproof. You're like, you want, you become that magical unicorn, right? That is like afraid of nothing, you know? And, and then when you become that people will more likely come to you on a regular basis. Oh yeah. Doesn't mean that you can't be out asking still because you still need to ask. But I'm just yeah. saying when you have that confidence and you have that like 
I love everything that this business, this opportunity, this team, this product, this blah, blah, blah is done for me. You can't just, you know, when you scroll social media and you see someone beaming, you're just like, oh, what is she doing? Oh my gosh. You know? And then you have to reach out to that person. What are you doing? What are you drinking? People come to you, but you still have to put in the work. You still have to ask. You still have to take action yourself. Yeah. Otherwise so, you're going to be like, well, so I don't know. I hope that like, I know that there wasn't really necessarily actionable steps from this, but like what I wanted really from you guys is to really get in the mindset of, um, the side hustle becomes the full-time hustle, right? It doesn't work any other way than that. Like this business is built over time. It's built over putting in the work on a daily basis over a period of time. And it's compounded over time. Like your behaviors are right. And that is the only way you can build this business. Like you will not come into this business, not do any work and have people magically come to you and make a bunch of money. That's just not going to happen. And that doesn't happen in any business. Right. So I don't know why people think somehow it does in this one. Right. Yeah. But, but what I want you guys to be able to focus on is really realizing that there is much more opportunity out there when you focus on the needs that people need, right? Because I think that like, we think about like the big magical unicorn or the rock star coach or, or the people that we really want to join our team. And I feel like we sit around and we go, I don't know who to invite. I don't have anyone to invite. Like, I, I don't know how many times I've heard that from my coaches. I've said it to myself, you know, like I hear it from other leaders even, you know, where they're like, I don't know. I just am not inviting anyone because I don't have anyone to invite. And I'm like, dude, you have like 3000 people on your social media account. You have a lot of people to invite, right? You're just not doing the work to just find out. Right. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take, I mean, you can literally, I swear to you, I could go right now and I could scroll to any one of your guys' Facebook pages and I could find a relatable reason as to why I should invite you to the coaching opportunity within a minute. I guarantee you. If anyone wants to challenge me on that, do it now and I will do it. Well, I raised my hand, but I wasn't going to challenge you. <laughs> I was actually going to agree because I was in this headspace earlier and um, Tracy's on here, Jackson, she's my success partner. And we zoomed and I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't have anybody to invite. And we just kind of vibed and I got in that right headspace and I went and sent like a trillion on Instagram and I was just like, Hey, I love your page. But it like, I found something to connect with and I was like, this would be great for you. And I'm just like, why could I not do that this morning? And it's, it is, it's that mindset. You're so worried about what other people are going to think about you that you're like skipping, giving them the opportunity to change their lives. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Or like even, even doing things like, like I've been really working on that whole side hustle thing. Right. And like the whole, like, you know, we talk about our avatars and like the five things or the, whatever the things that we're into, right. You know, so like one of the one things for me is obviously pinups and, and Star Wars. And I met this girl on Instagram who was really bummed because she couldn't go to Comic-Con because she's paying off debt, right. Cause she's doing the total money makeover, which is what I'm doing too. Right. So I'm like, Oh, boom, it's a connection. And I'm like, of course, now I have a reason to invite to her. That's not just like, Hey, I got this side hustle idea. You know, I mean, that's not how I said it to her, but it was, Hey, I saw your post about not being able to go to Comic-Con. Like I'm also missing my Comic-Con in my city this year because we're paying off our debt, but I'm totally using this opportunity to pay off debt. You know, like we're both nerds, right? Like we both like, we have that nerdy connection and we have the debt connection. We're looking for extra income. Boom. I invited her, right? It was like, no big deal. Like, it's like one of those things that you just, you got to take yourself out of it and only think about like what they need and what but, but not always be looking for the, the magical unicorn. Like right. so many people, everyone, I'm going to say everyone, every single person on this planet can, can benefit from a side hustle from extra income. So there's absolutely no reason for you to just basically not invite anyone, find a reason, you know, and unless they're a total jerk, like I said. So get out of your own way and get out there and ask but steer clear from dicks. Yeah. <laughs> steer clear from dicks. Because we don't want them on the deep call. They're just not good. Oh, they totally mess up with their mess our vibe. Yeah. We got to keep our vibe good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do you guys have any questions? I know there's like 52 things in my chat box. I don't know if they were, you guys were just chatting. We were just chatting. I was answering questions any, as you went. Questions. 
Like, so you were chatting in the chat box, not listening, like, this time, like, I, I was doing know. both. I was half-assing the call. I was answering questions as they were coming. So no one has any questions or anything like that? Oh, uh, what's, or... what's the name of the Pete Carroll book? Do you know? Oh, I don't know. Hold on. I mean, I'm sure we can Google it. I'm going to do it right now. Do you, Cindy, I have a question for you that could help other people. Do you have a recommendation for a planner or some way of helping with time management? Uh, I do. Um, hold on here. Uh, look, I was She's here. half-assing. No, hold on. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my planner that I've been using. And then I'm going to text my husband real quick and ask him the name of the book. Oh yeah, Dana, I love that. Okay, so I use time blocking in my own business. Um, I love that. And I combine it with this planner, which is now my new favorite thing in the whole world. Um, Hold it up so we can see it. So this is called the High Achievers Playbook, and it's basically a planner that is built for uh, network marketers, right? So I'm gonna just show you guys real quick. Do we have time? Can I show it real quick? It's only gonna be a couple minutes. Yep. <laughs> so first of all, the inside is all um, dry erase, right? So you can, this is my thought. You can put dry erase or you can do your like diamond map, right? If you're trying to go diamond, you can like map out your coaches and then scratch them out. So you can see them. Like that's how one of my coaches uses it for that. Um, the whole beginning is all about persistence and it has different things. And then um, you have like your... I don't have this because I have it on my whiteboard, so I haven't actually filled this out because it's on my whiteboard, but it's sitting here. But basically, the beginning is all your goals. So your goals for spiritual health, family, career, your mission statement, which I have sitting right in front of me. Um, it also has um, top books or audios for high achievers. And there's a list of like um, like 25 personal development books that are like ideal books for people who are in network marketing, um, which is awesome. Okay, so like basically each day there, I kind of got this idea from Vicki, this first idea. So there's like a make it half, here I'll show you blank one. Real quick. So like basically each day is blank and it has a make it happen. So if you track your business with pen and paper, you can track it, it's date, time, activity, the contact name, and info. But for me, I use this section for um, my social media comments. So like Vicki shared with me that every night she goes through her social media comments and she writes down a list of the people that have commented on her social media. And then that way the next day, those are the very first people that she reaches out to. And so that's what I use this section for, is I actually go through here and I just list um, where they where they saw me at it was on my Facebook or my Instagram. Those are basically the two social medias I use. So um, So I have it. I actually write it on the next day's page and then it has my to-do list for my business to do for my personal um, And then it has like every day it has I accomplished the following numbers of calls made numbers of minutes spent on personal development if I talk to my success partner numbers of new contacts made so new adding to network a number of follow-ups and it's cool there's a new quote every day there's a note section there's an a, a, you know exercise and, and water activity tracker can um, you get this on Amazon uh, yeah I think so my coach actually bought it for me Alexis hold on because I'm actually it's, looking on Amazon right now and the only one that's coming up as high achievers playbook is the path planner um, I, I'm gonna look at it real quick because they're fairly expensive. Um, but I'll tell you what, like I, you know, I mean, I use Team Z, right? Okay, so it's called. If you go to HighAchieversPlaybook.com, you can go there and you can buy two get one free. So you could even like go in on it, like with another coach or something like that. And basically, they're 90 days, so it's 90 days at a time that you use it for. And there's all kinds of other, um, so that's like the daily stuff, right? And then, 
just stuck. I, I love stuff like this. Yeah, no, I love this stuff. But like, there's like all these little things that come with it, right? Like this little thing about having a good attitude. It's like an attitude monitor thing. It's in there, in the back. I don't, I don't use this because I have a whiteboard that I use. But for those of you guys that don't have a whiteboard and don't have like a Teams or whatever, like it's got um, your calendar. So it's got a fold out calendar that like is for the 90 days, right? So it flips out and it folds all up and fits into the calendar. So you guys could do your marketing plan in here and have your marketing plan. Let's say you're not at home, you need to leave, you need to go with your phone, you take your little playbook uh, planner and you go. Uh, Miss Hurt Republic does have one, but I do not like it. So I'm just gonna be honest. It's not, um, and then there's also a, a paper, this book right here is master prospect list. So you're always adding to your list and it has like, you know, the name, how you connect with them. So if you usually connect with them via phone, email, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, um, you know, so there's like, you know, hundreds, hundreds of books in here for that. And that's, so that's like how it is. And it's awesome. Like one of my coaches gave it to me and I don't, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm like in a cross between the dinosaur land of pen and paper and technology because I don't like, like fake, I don't like eBooks. I read real books. So like, I am totally not technology savvy. Like all my coaches make fun of me all the time. They literally have to help me with everything that has to do with anything technology. But Teamsy is so easy that I have figured out a way to make that work. And then I also use pen and paper to kind of like, you know, coincide with that. So like, basically I write down my things. I go right into my Teamsy and then for time management, I use time blocking. So for me, I posted my, uh, did I post that in the leaders group or did I post that in the big group? The leaders group. Oh, okay. So I can post you guys. I have a very simple schedule that I use uh, and that I share with my coaches. And I actually work in like 15. Um, I actually just have it on my phone. Um, I get very distracted. And so I have to you, which I'm sure y'all Clearly. <laughs> Like that's not anything strange to you guys. You guys know all about how I get distracted and I ramble. And um, so I was just going to share with you guys really quick. Um, so basically I, so my, my standard power hour is two and a half hours. So basically what I tell all my coaches is I give this to them and then I tell them if they have more time, they add more time to your blocks. If you have less time, if you only have an hour or an hour and a half, you shorten your blocks, right? You put, cut them in half and you may not feel like this amount of time can be successful, but I will tell you right now here, hold on. So my first thing is 15 minutes. I respond to all social media posts and I, add, you know, out of my contacts list, right? So I do what Vicky, what Vicky said to do my, and that's 15 minutes. My second one is I answer all inbox messages, oldest to newest. And I do not answer any new messages that come in while I'm doing that. I only answer, I literally go up. I never delete a message in my inboxes. I only go up from the bottom and I go all the way up. And then, I, and then if, if the 15 minutes isn't over, if someone's responded, then I start at the bottom again and I go all the way up and I continue to do that for 15 minutes. When it's done, it's done. Even if people are still messaging me, I'm done, right? And then I do my follow-ups in Teamsy. I do those first. So I have my scheduled follow-ups that I've like uh, redirected. I do that for 15 minutes. And then for 20 minutes, I send out new CCQ and relationship build messages. And I add to my network at the same time. So I basically will add a couple of people on each person's page. So 20 minutes. And then I do 10 minutes of Instagram CCQing. Yeah, I'll, I'll put the whole thing in there. Should I just not even talk about it and just do that? Well, I, whatever. To save time. <laughs> to save time? Okay. I mean, okay, sorry. You, know, you know you like to talk, so. Basically, I'll upload a picture of, like, my actual checklist. All it is is a checklist I have on my phone. Look, it's in my notes section. And every day, I literally just, you know, respond to all social media posts. I check it off, right? So that way, if I get distracted, 
because you know I have three kids and another job and all these weird things in my life and three dogs and all that life then I go back to it and see what's next and I always do them in order because I believe that this order of importance is truly like the business building order of your business right um, like my last thing is check back office whatever if I don't check my back office every day it's not gonna be the world right so um, I used to I will tell you though that I used to avoid it like Vicki has gotten on me like a freaking animal about this like if I didn't have a time because I used to do it for two and a half hours and if I didn't have a full two and a half hours I just wouldn't do it right even as a diamond coach and a coach for five years I just it's not gonna be like her hour today sorry you know right but now no matter what time I have I have been doing it every single day and um you know, even if I only have an hour or 45 minutes or I mean anything. So I just literally just, and I do not go to bed now until my entire thing is checked off. They were checked off because I need to go. Yay. Woo -woo. Awesome. Thank you guys. Or thank you guys. Thank you, Cindy, so much for all of that great information. Um, you gave a lot of good tips. Yes, they're not action plans, but there's things that we could start implementing with our mindset and moving forward and not being afraid of asking and not just searching for that golden egg opportunity and really reaching out and connecting to all those people. And, um, especially with time management, I feel like so many people focus or don't focus because of time management. You know, a lot of us are moms and we know that we sort of morph our schedules based on our children. And so, you know, either the dishes don't get done or the laundry doesn't get folded up and put away the same day it gets, you know, washed or all this stuff and things happen. And we just feel like we're busy all day long, especially as moms. Um, and we feel like it's hard to squeeze time in to do our own workouts, let alone our own beach body business. And so, like you said yourself, you, you wouldn't do it. If you didn't have your designated time to do it, you wouldn't do it. Um, and one thing like hope on a team call a while ago, she said that she stopped doing her workouts cause she didn't have time. But then the next day after a team call, she did 10 minute trainer because she was like, you know what, I'm going to get a workout in and I have 10 minutes. So I'm going to get it done. So good job, hope. But yeah, if squeeze in any time that you can and make it can make it situated for you because everyone's, everyone's lifestyle is different. Everyone's environment's different. Every day is different, but you still need to make the priorities a priority and a story. You come first. Your business is a priority. You are a CEO of your business. You need to treat it like a business. That involves asking, guys, okay? Don't put these notes away and never do anything with them. Like Melinda said earlier, she's like, I'm horrible at that. I'm good at note taking, but it's actually doing something with my notes. I heard you, or I read you. I read you. Yeah. Anyways, you guys ready for a selfie? All right. Thanks for watching the recording.